Time now for a WNEP-TV2 exclusive. News 116's Ryan Leckie's one-on-one -on -one interview with female rock and roll legend Pat Benatar. Ryan live right now at a venue in Lackawanna County talking about Pat Benatar. Good morning. You got it. Good morning, Tom, from Eleanor Rigby's in Lackawanna County, a place where a lot of young rockers come to kind of carve out their niche on the scene. You know, when it comes to Pat Benatar, while she has a name that most music, lover rec most music lovers recognize, even if you don't, you probably know many of her songs, which have come anthems, which have become anthems for generations of fans. But you know what? Right now, it's more than just her music people are, are paying attention to. It's this book, actually her first book called Between a Heart in a rock place. In it, she opens up about everything from breaking into what was once considered a rock and roll boys club to a moment in her life when she was ready to give it all up. Long before Pat Benatar was known for this, she was Pat Anjayeski, a girl growing up in Brooklyn who later married her high school boyfriend Dennis Benatar in 1972. A wedding she describes in her new book as a terrible mistake because the two just didn't mesh after marriage. The pair later divorced as Pat began her climb to the top. And one person who this rock legend says hasn't gotten the credit he deserves for helping her make it is longtime guitarist and husband of 28 years, Neil Giraldo, who Pat nicknamed Spider for his black and yellow outfits. In her new memoir, Between a Heart and a Rock Place, Pat talks about Neil as her collaborator of sorts, the man who helped her turn that once classically trained voice into the iconic sound she could always hear in her head. But probably the biggest thing Pat is trying to set straight in her new book and our recent interview is the rocky relationship she had for years with Chrysalis Records. She signed with them in the late 1970s to launch her first album. Pat and her husband Neil opened up about this and more to Newswatch 16 right before taking to the stage during a recent concert at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs near Wilkes-Barre. Everybody grows, you're not supposed to stay in this little box all the time. After a few albums back in the 80s, Pat says she was ready for a change after becoming tired of playing that sexy and tough character she created for stage. But her record company thought otherwise. They just didn't want to let go of it. They, you know, it was. You well, they also crossed the line too. They, they started crossing they the line. They crossed the line. They used too many it liberties as a and... focal point as opposed to using the music as a focal point. In retrospect, I understand because you know, it's, I can imagine if someone came and said change the coca-cola bottle you know people would be crazy so i mean i understood what the problem was but you know you're still people you gotta do what you gotta do and Newswatch 16 tried to get comment from Pat Benatar's former record company, Chrysalis, but our calls were not returned. And coming up new in our next half hour at 7.30, you know, so many female rockers especially have said people just like Pat Benatar have blazed the trails for them to really do their thing on all sorts of stages, touring venues across the country. So what does she think about it? What does it mean to her? She'll weigh in on that coming up. Tom, back to you. You can't talk about music in the 80s without at least mentioning Pat Benatar. Big you stuff got there. It. All See right. You, buddy. See you, Ryan. Thanks. It's a 16 2 exclusive. Our interview with rock royalty Pat Benatar. Newswatch 16's Ryan Lucky spoke with her recently, and he's live at a concert venue that's always rocking in the summertime. Good morning, Ryan. Hi, good morning, Mindy and Tom. Well, I'm hanging out here at Eleanor Rigby's in Lackawanna County, and this place is where a lot of artists come sort of to get their big break on their rise to the top. And you know what? Speaking of being at the top, that's Pat Benatar. And at 57 years old, she told us she doesn't plan on stepping off a stage anytime soon, but now she is talking about the struggles that it took to get to the top. It's all part of her new memoir called Between a Heart and a Rock Place. And in it, she talks about a variety of things, including life as a rock star and how it really isn't all glitz and glam. Just before stepping on stage during a recent concert at Mohegan Sun in Pocono Downs near Wilkes-Barre, rock legend Pat Benatar and her stage sidekick slash husband Neil Giraldo talked with Newswatch 16. The couple has written songs, toured, and produced 19 top 40 singles together for more than three decades, including this hit, You Better Run, which was the second video in history to ever be played on MTV. You better run! You better but as Pat writes in her new book, the music scene back in the 80s was downright sexist. 
The singer says back then, many in society assumed a woman's role in the industry was to be a groupie to a band or a sex symbol, not a rock star who could carry a tune. You were really like the daughter of the women's movement. Well, you, along with so many other female musicians, when you look back, what does that mean to you when people like Lady Gaga and other uh, big stars nowadays might say people like Pat Benatar helped blaze a trail for females in rock? Well, I mean, it's really gratifying. I mean, you know, I was part of an era of, of women. It, you know, there were many of us all together that were kind of um, making up the path that didn't exist, you know, and it was really hard, but it was really fun. It was exhilarating to go out there every single day and try to figure it out, you know, especially when they were throwing stuff at you every day. And then when it comes to blazing trails for other female rock and roll artists, Pat Benatar says she hopes she made a difference. But if you ask her fans, they say she definitely did. She made it easier, better for the, for the girls, I think. How so? To get ahead in singing. I think she is awesome. She's been around a long time, and uh, she puts on a real good show. Coming up, new in our next half hour at 8 a.m. right here on WNEP2, the four-time consecutive Grammy winner weighs in on some of the world's hottest stars today, like Katy Perry. Plus, later we find out what Pat and her husband Neil are up to, what's cooking in California when they're not on tour. Much more to come, guys. See you in a bit. And also, Neil Giraldo, he's a great guitarist, too. Yeah, that guy knows how to rock it. He really does. All, All right. right. Thanks, See you, Ryan. Ryan. For a WNEP2 exclusive, Newswatch 16's Ryan Leckie's one-on-one -on -one interview with female rock legend Pat Benatar. Ryan is live in Lackawanna County at a place that's always rocking. Good morning, Ryan. Hi, good morning, Mindy, from Eleanor Rigby's in Lackawanna County. And it's here where so many young rockers really come to kind of carve out their place in the music scene before making their way to the top, just like Pat Benatar did when she really burst onto the global scale with hits like Heartbreaker and We Belong. And she's really been strong on the since the 1980s and just recently she wrote a tell-all book talking about everything from touring family life and how she credits her husband Neil Giraldo for helping her hit every show with her best shot it seems whenever Pat Benatar is on a stage her guitarist and husband of 28 years Neil Giraldo is right there by her side just like he was during a recent show at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs near Wilkes-Barre Pat has toured with the same band for years, something she mentions in her new book, Between a Heart and a Rock Place. She humbly writes that it's the musicians, especially husband Neil, that have made her the success she is today. Most people, I have to tell you out there, are pretty um, savvy and astute. They really get it. It's, it's the other parts, you know, the people that are in the powers that be sometimes don't get it. I've seen her three times, but the first time was the most memorable one. She played at the Allentown Fairgrounds in 79 with her husband. He had a broken arm. And he was he, he cut his cut half half of the cast off because he, he couldn't bend his arm and right on stage. You guys have married since 82, right? Correct. Who is the Pep Benatar that people don't know? Your wife. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> She's Pat Giraldo to me. That's right. <laughs> we started together at the yeah. same time. Yeah. So. But does that, does that rocking personality ever come out at home that you saw back in the day? That where you're like... Only when he leaves his socks on the floor. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. That's... No. And just how hip is this rock star couple? Do they listen to top 40 tunes today from singers like Katy Perry? Well, we have daughters, so we, we have listen to all that stuff. Yeah, she keeps us yeah. very plugged in. We listen to Luciano Pavarotti. That's what we listen to. So, but we hear everything. We like it. We yeah, like it. I Katie do. Perry I mean, I just like to see it going forward all the time. I'm not so concerned about um, what I think is good. My taste is yeah, irrelevant. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter us, what we yeah. think. It's just I like to see it moving forward always. And as for Pat and Neil's daughters, Haley and Hannah, the rock and roll couple says now that the industry is more open to women, if their kids decided to take up a music career, they'd be right there rooting them on. And that's all you could yeah, ever Yeah, it's just music. It, had, it has nothing to do with yeah. anything no else. Gender it's fantastic. Yeah, no gender thing to them at all, you know, which is all, you know, I was dreaming about. And as for Pat and Neil's home life, well, they're usually there when they're not on tour. They actually only tour during the summer so they can spend a lot of time during the year with their two daughters at home in California. Coming up new in our next half hour, Pat Benatar fans from our area hit us with their best shots, their best Benatar tunes. Many more to come.
That's interesting stuff, Ryan. They have such beautiful daughters. I'm not going to go there. They're hot. Yeah. They're very, very cute. Yeah, thank you We could you so talk much. all day. See you later. Interesting all stuff. Right. I didn't know. Our 16 to exclusive with Pat Benatar continues right now. Newswatch 16's Ryan Leckie spoke with her recently. He's live at a concert venue that's always rocking. Good morning, Ryan. Hi, good morning, Mindy and Tom from Eleanor Rigby's in Lackawanna County. You know, the stage I'm standing on is where a lot of young musicians get to finally rock out in front of hundreds of people, hopefully getting their break so the world can see them. And speaking of the world, well, it's hearing a lot more from Pat Benatar these days, especially since her new book came out. It is a memoir called Between a Heart and a Rock Place. And it's something where you really see another side of the singer and hear about her struggles that really, at one point in her life, had her all fired up. Singer-songwriter Pat Benatar has a lot to be all fired up about these days. A new summer tour, a new book, and a music career where she's now calling the shots. Unlike when she first found stardom in the 1980s. It's impossible to let anyone do that ever again. You know, then you have learned everything that you need to know, all the little bits that you need to know logistically about how to do it. And to think, the singing all began when she was eight years old. Your first solo I read was It Must Be Spring. Do you remember? Yes. How's it go? Uh, go. <laughs> I don't think I can sing it now. <laughs> what you might not know about Pat is before her singing career took off, she once worked as a bank teller. She quit that job at 19 after seeing a Liza Minnelli concert, trusting her gut to go after her dream. And now, almost three decades later, she's still living it with guitarist and husband of 28 years, Neil Gerardo, by her side. A man she credits for helping to keep the couple's rock star marriage as normal as possible. And for helping Pat create those legendary vocals that have become anthems for fans of all ages. Love is a battlefield. Hit me with your best shot. Come on. Do you ever need somebody to play a tambourine on Hit Me With Your Best Shot? Oh. I'm really good. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. I'm kidding. I'm you got that it. off. Right. <laughs> tried. Yeah, I really tried. It's not like I asked them to sing with them. But hey, if you missed any part of my WNAP2 exclusive with Pat Benatar and her husband, Neil Giraldo, you can catch it all and recap it all later today online at WNAP.com. Just scroll to the center of the homepage and click on Lecky Live. Now, Tom and Mindy, as I said, it's not like I asked her to sing. I just wanted to play a little tambourine. Come on. That can't hurt. They, they seemed uh, pretty cool, too. What was your impression of them? They were great. I did have a blast with them. It was really funny, though, where we did the interview because it was so windy and Pat wanted her hair to stay in place before she took to the stage. It smelled like salami in the trailer. It was interesting. I was like, hey, Pat. Ooh, salami. Is that a new clone? Yeah. More, more hairspray than Ryan Lucky. All right. There you go. Yeah. See you later. See you, Ryan. Thanks. Doze up next with your weather forecast.